guys i welcome you all so now we already have the lure varnished and coated white before the previous layer of varnish now we're gonna improve on the white base so i'm covering here everything with the white color white primer and then we're gonna put our base colors Starting with the mixture of uh, fluorescent pink and pearl white, this for our belly. Low pressure, around 15 psi, and we're coating just the belly. Now I'm starting with again pearl white, mixing it directly in this small chamber of my airbrush and adding the dark blue. This is my blend for the upper body of the lure. Again nice and pearlescent, so there is a distinctive contrast between the matte black shell pattern so to speak and the base layer colors. Here I've decided to still redo a little bit with the pink on the belly to have it more like lure or popping, especially that the lure will be swimming in the water at the angle, head down. So if the predator chasing it from the back, it will be nicely flashing this fluorescent pink towards it. Hey guys, I welcome you from the dungeon, quick interruption, I'm planning to do the uh, pool uh, for the color of the popper, we're gonna paint the popper next week, so I'm just gonna drop the card somewhere here, uh, please uh, click on the pool, choose one of the three options uh, that I'm posting, or if you have any different suggestion, then just uh, click others and comment below. So uh, next Saturday we paint the popper with whatever color you decide. Let's continue with the bus crank paint. Here a little retrospection uh, from my end, basically I'm preparing now the bib for the lure and this is a ready-made one from the Lexan, which is the perfect, perfect shape and perfect size as you can see uh, for the type of crankbait that I'm constructing. However, because uh, this lure is perfect for bouncing on the bottom rocks where the perch uh, like to attack it, I'm making again uh, my own bib out of this uh, composite. This is uh, like a glass fiber epoxy resin laminate. It is super durable, it's basically unbreakable. So I'm just uh, tracing the original bib 
and making my own now sending it filing it to the exact shape first with the file after with the block of the sandpaper to have it nice and smooth and perfectly symmetrical of course along you along uh, the whole process you constantly checking the symmetry as this is really important if your bib is not symmetrical your lure will never swim through and now as you can see we have the exact copy of the ready-made one it's also the same thickness one millimeter this laminate so now we're gonna test it if it fits nicely in the lure and as you can see it does basically exactly the same as the previous one we're not fixing it now uh, this is of course the step before painting uh, before the base color and uh, the epoxy coat i didn't want to install the bib so it is ready for later here i'm doing the fitting now after the base color is already applied and as always i will have glue it with the super glue using this little stick so i'm not blobbing a lot of super glue directly on the bib on the lure because that could run down the paint job and screw up the effect but after i'm sure that the bib is perfectly symmetrical from all the angles i'm applying only little dab of the super glue on the masking tape and then using this little tool adding it only in the crucial point so on the sides of the bib and everywhere along you think this might not be strong enough as strong as if you would put directly first into the slot and then install the bib but again because the bib will be fixed into the lure with at least two layers of epoxy i don't really worry about it falling off on me and to be honest it never actually happened so i will anyway as you can see trace it all around the bib from up and down uh, with the super glue so it really sits there super strong and again two coats of epoxy will make it basically one piece together with the lure so we can abuse it as i said we can bump it on all those rocks on the bottom to try to lure the perch to attack and as you can see this epoxy it's not completely transparent because i already added a very tiny glitter it's basically like a powder pigment for cosmetics you can buy it in in the cosmetic shop or on aliexpress and it will give this extra pearlescent uh, effect to the under color that it will create the great contrast with the matte black uh, crow crawfish crayfish pattern that's next day morning after the epoxy coat and as you can see it is really nice and pearlescent this lure right now nice and shiny the clear coat come out real good the colors are popping nicely now of course because we're using the black color and the bib is already installed we need to mask it with the masking tape just gonna do a quick montage here now 
preparing my cardboard to create the stencil. Here is the first part of the stencil, which will be the color of the, of the crayfish. I will place it like so and then trace it with my black color. Uh, in order to look more realistic, I'm adding these uh, little notches with my exacto uh, knife that will represent the cracks in the crawfish shell. The same thing I gonna do now with the second part of the stencil, which will be the sides of the, of the shell. I'm measuring how big I need to do it and then I do it slightly roundish profile as again those will be the sides of the shell and once it is cut to the right measure again I'm gonna create these little notches to represent the cracks in the shell of the crayfish. Now, the third and the final part of our stencil is the straight edge of the paper, again with the notches, and this will be uh, used to trace it from the upper contour to the sides until we reach uh, the merge of the two colors, and then we're gonna apply it the roundish stencil. Anyway, you will see how it's done uh, while I'm actually painting the loom. And this is the last part of the stencil that we need to prepare it because of course we will need another straight edge, in this case not serrated, to make the little straight markings on the belly of the lure, of the crayfish, but uh, for that I will just use the other side of this paper. And all of that basically this uh, method of painting the, the crayfish I learned uh, on the YouTube channel uh, Jekyll Bates. Jen Crevasi, big thanks to you, big shout out to you for teaching us in all your tutorials. I will actually drop the link in the video description below to her channel. You can learn plenty useful stuff and tricks for airbrushing the lures. So please visit the channel and let's support each other here on the YouTube platform. So again, big thanks to her. I will just show it quickly. So first, starting with this collar Starting from the back, the uh, cross sections of the shell and we starting from the back because you don't want to put the template on the wet paint. I mean obviously we will wait until it dries but because uh, doing it in the reverse order we are not uh, putting the, the stencil on top of the already painted part of the loop. You can decide how many uh, this shell segments you would like to have on the lure. Here I'm going for three, but to be honest, it was a little bit, uh, I'm sorry, three uh, cross sections, so actually four pieces of shell. And to be honest, for this size of the lure, which is 35 millimeters, it was a little bit too much. Anyway, you can uh, decide that depends on the, on the real estate that you have available on your lures. And now, as I said, this is the straight edge, also serrated, that we will now tracing the, the segments down until the merge of the two colors or slightly uh, below. And this, that the fact that we started from the top, we have the perfect guidelines for both sides, so we make sure that our uh, crayfish shell looks symmetrical. And here I went a little bit too uh, high 
angle so I'm having like this uh, shell that each of them starting from the back should be bigger than the other this one unfortunately will be smaller so it is not really so uh, natural looking however this is of course 35 millimeter lure I never did this pattern on some small such a small kind of so now I'm already using the roundish part the collar still goes in the reverse order we shadowing towards the back of the lure and here I'm already doing the lower parts of the shell and again of course in order to achieve the correct result mostly you spraying on your stencil and only the overspray creates this nice shadowing of the crawfish crawfish shell and as you can see it gives a really cool cool effect so i encourage you all to try this pattern it gives really a lot of satisfaction when it comes out right because it really creates lovely looking lure very natural uh, natural pattern the, as I said uh, the previous lure that I had was green and orange and the perches and chaps they just went crazy for it so here I will drop uh, my chap a photo and then just a montage of the second side And here is the final step, so making uh, the bottom uh, shell segments with the straight edge. And this is a pretty straightforward, same as uh, seen. And here obviously you don't need to match the upper shell segments, you can go with as many as you want. You can stop uh, before the abdomen of the crayfish, that's how it is actually on the real creature. But I just go uh, with the similar uh, similar um, gap between them all the way uh, to the to the front of the lure. Doesn't matter if it doesn't look that realistic. It's just one continuous pattern, and you really uh, drive all the fishes crazy. We are. The paint job is completed, it's not exactly symmetrical, I went a little bit lower, uh, this side I went a little bit uh, shorter the segments, on the other side I went a little bit lower, but then again, on such a small lure moving fast through the water, fish won't even recognize it, and as I say, it's not really easy to do it uh, on such a small lure. Now, again i'm installing the eyes my usual way so a little dab of a super glue and here i have ready 3d eyes uh, made with the uv resin and copper uh, powder for this uh, this cosmetic powder again i put it in however after checking it they don't sit very well so i wasn't happy with that I remove it and I decided to do this uh, little trick. So putting again this uh, pigment powder into the little dab of a UV resin, mixing it and now I'm using this tool to make the dots only to dot the eye on the lure, which I will immediately set with the UV light. So look at that, uh, this is like the old school method, but I think it definitely gives more like a crayfishy look by doing it this way so dabbing it then immediately setting it with the uv light and i will repeat it several times on each eye to have it them nice and poppy so they are like a little bubbles bubbly eyes on top of the face of the crayfish really nice effect i'm happy how this uh, this method worked so here basically the rule is completed. Final layer of epoxy before going for our mandatory swim test. And then here, uh, please pay attention, I will also coat the bib of the lure with the epoxy. This is only the first layer, then I will also repeat it the next day and put the second layer of the epoxy.
quick final look of the lure before we going uh, to the swim test I created this little turntable and as usual we ending with the mandatory water test as you can see nice tight wiggle thank you very much for watching guys as always i see you in the next episode please subscribe to the channel uh, like the video if you enjoy the, 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 the content comment any suggestions of any new lure are welcome remember to do the pull for the color of the popper such a jerk saying hello take care and see you next week